And I was touching upon it on the uh, on the last slide. I mean, you just have so many assets out there today uh, that are not registered uh, at this time. The estimate now is that there's about 37 million uh, assets uh, registered in the, the IUID registry. And of that, 4.4 million uh, are on GFP contracts. And there's about an estimate of about 9,000 uh, GFP contracts out in circulation uh, uh, by uh, different organizations or contractors out there working on the government's uh, behalf. The tip of the iceberg is, is that you just see, hey, all right, you, you see the 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 uh, the shiny part of the uh, of the iceberg, but underneath there's just so many more assets from an estimate uh, estimate perspective, almost 110 uh, million legacy assets that are unregistered, and I touched upon it uh, on in the opening, where the DoD is 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 really understands that they've got to pass an audit, and they can't pass an audit if the contracts that are out there um, are not marked, uh, there, there's, you know, there, there, there's no reporting into the IUID registry, uh, they can't account for their items and they can't account you know, who has custody uh, as well as what condition uh, these assets are in. So this is a big uh, undertaking in terms of the DOD at the end of this year getting the news in terms of where they are in terms of being able to pass an audit. So I know in the fall, not the fall, but in the, in the spring, the audits began. And the race is to get and shift this iceberg to start getting these assets uh, marked with a, uh, a compliant IUID label, as well as registered into DOD systems. So that is, is, is where we find ourselves and as a contractor and a, a steward of government property, uh, if you're not handling and executing uh, these procedures, then nine out of 10 times, or there's a high probability that you're gonna start feeling a little heat from your, um, your government contracting officers in terms of getting a better grip on uh, uh, getting all these assets um, uh, in the IUID registry and um, being able to account uh, in terms of what, where they're located and who has custody. Shreve, that's a great point. And uh, just to expand, expand on that just a little bit, uh, there tends to be uh, uh, some understanding that if I just mark the asset with the IOID label, uh, DCMA auditor is going to come into my place, check my compliance, see the label, and I'm going to be fine. Uh, that's really just 50% of the requirement being met. You have two parts. You've got to mark your asset, but then you also have to report it. If you're not going to report the asset, you're not completing your full re uh, compliance requirements there. And that's where we see uh, 110 million legacy assets unregistered. The, the number is huge, obviously. So what we're trying to stress here is, yes, marking the asset with an IUID label compliant, that is, uh, is extremely important and it's very easy to see that you've done, it's a tangible item, but reporting those assets is equally as important and that's what you want to be able to do um, when you have a DCMA auditor coming in to verify your compliance. Yeah, very I important. mean that's why it is, it is essential to be able to identify, mark, track, and report on your assets and uh, that shows good stewardship in regards to uh, the contracts that you may be um, in possession of uh, for the government.